Hey guys, this is just a little introduction um, to let you know a couple things about these videos. Uh, for one thing, I've turned the speed up on these videos because I talk a little bit too slowly. And that's why my voice sounds a little bit higher pitched. Uh, the other thing I want to let you guys know about is your projects do not save automatically on Soundtrap. Okay, they don't save automatically and so you always need to be hitting this, uh, this pink purple save button up at the very top of the window, okay, to save your work. If you ever forget and you, you log back into Soundtrap and you had forgotten to save last, last time, a little box will pop up here that says, do you want to load your draft, which draft just means the last thing you were working on, your unsaved draft. Uh, make sure to click yes. If you click no on that window, uh, whatever you were working on before will be gone forever, okay? So just a warning. All right, let's get on with the show. Okay, this is the Soundtrap website. And you can see how Soundtrap is spelled up here. It's just Soundtrap.com. And when you first go to Soundtrap.com, you might show up on the Education tab. You might show up on the Personal tab. I don't know why that happens, but you do want Personal. You want the Personal version of Soundtrap. Even though we're a school, you're choosing Personal, okay? Then you're just hitting this orange Get Started button. And you are confirming uh, by clicking this left button here that you want to use Soundtrap for personal use. You will then tell it that you are signing up with Google. You'll need to select allow to allow it to access your Google information. Um, and you can create a username for yourself. Uh, if you don't, it'll, I think, just give you your student ID number. Um, I've just put in my full name here. Once you log in to Soundtrap, you will uh, first get a tutorial video and I believe it'll also put you inside the studio with an example song loaded up um, that you can kind of listen to and play around with. I would say since I'm about to show you guys how to use Soundtrap you don't need to bother with any of that. Uh, you can just instead click on the Soundtrap logo in the upper left corner to get back out to this main screen and then you're going to hit the orange enter studio button so you can start your own file from scratch. Okay so that's what I'm doing now. I'm out in my main profile screen and I'm hitting this orange enter studio button. And here we are. Uh, we're inside the studio and this window opens up, the select template window. You always, always, always want to hit the blank uh, button. You are creating a project from scratch here and so we're clicking blank. Um, any of these other ones, by the way, if you try to sell one of these to me as your own song, I, I know them all. Uh, I know what they sound like and I will be able to tell right away. If you really, really want to later on, feel free to open one of these and sort of pick it apart and see how it got made. But for right now, we're just starting from scratch and making something simple, okay? So here's the main uh, studio window for Soundtrap. And the studio window consists of a timeline window, uh, which is this main big blank space right now. You can see it has numbers across the top, almost like a ruler. And what those numbers represent are what are called in music measures, okay, measures. So one measure um, consists of four beats, at least in most music that you are going to hear, okay? And so if we look on this ruler, say here's measure four right here, you've got actually four tick marks here, one, two, three, four. And those correspond to the beats of a measure, right? So four beats is a measure um, and four measures and we'll get into this a little bit later, four measures makes up a chunk of beats that is often called, say, a phrase. Eight measures as well can be a phrase. 16 can also be a phrase. Um, and so music in general is split up into chunks of four, multiples of four. So four, eight, 16, 32. It kind of doubles every time. Um, that's the general way that music um, is built together or built up rather. Um, but we will get into all of that a little bit later when you're kind of arranging your song. Down at the bottom, we have the um, play button. We have a record button, which is this red dot here. Um, and you're gonna use this a lot. Um, and the, we have this button, this is our stop button. And when you, you're already stopped and we click on that again, it will bring this pink line back to the start of the song. That pink line, by the way, is something called a playhead. Playhead, okay? All this line is, is an indication of where you're at currently in your song. So when you hit play on a song, the playhead moves forward 
to show you where you're currently at on your song and also when you're recording. So um, you can always click up here to drag it around, but to get to the beginning of your song, all you need to do is hit stop again and go back to the beginning. Now, these buttons up here um, seem pretty innocuous, but they're actually pretty important. Clicking on this pink button in the very top right corner opens the loops library. And you guys, we're, we are going to make a song out of a combination of loops and instruments that we record ourselves, okay? So this is the loops library. Um, and you're going to be using this button quite a bit to look for loops uh, to put into your song. And all loops are, are um, typically eight measures of a beat. Um, and we, we build our song by stacking multiple loops together. So let me show you. That just loops over and over and over. You could have that going for 10 minutes if you wanted. I want you guys to basically copy off what I'm doing. So we are going to start by finding a hi-hat loop and you'll be able to hear what hi-hats are in a second. It's a part of a drum kit. So if I type in hats right now, nothing comes up and nothing comes up because this featured um, button is here. And so we have to turn off featured because it's just trying to show us some featured loops that they think are the best. We need to click the X next to featured to get rid of that. And now it opens up and it's not just showing us the featured loop, it's showing us the entire library of loops that they have. And those include a bunch of hi-hat loops. So let me play you some hi-hat loops. You hear that loop? That's about four measures long. In fact, it might just be two. There's another. They're little symbols that uh, just create a very basic rhythm. And we are going to use some hi-hats. Um, we are going to double click on a loop. So we found a hi-hat loop. I'm going to use this one, Days Hats. You don't have to use this one. You can choose another one. So you're not doing exactly what I'm doing. Um, but as long as you have a hi-hat loop, you're good. And what I did there was I double clicked on it and it dropped it in and gave me eight measures of it here. And do you see this purple bar that just appeared up here underneath the ruler um, that shows us the measures? The fact that that bar is purple tells us that these eight measures are going to loop over and over and over, um, which is a good thing for now, because we're going to make kind of an eight measure sandwich of a bunch of different loops and instruments that we play. And then later on, we're going to take those and spread them out to arrange a song that lasts for longer than eight measures. But for right now, we want to leave this purple bar on and we, we want to leave it right here. So don't go dragging the ends of it like this or clicking on it till it turns gray because that turns off that, that loop. We want to keep it exactly the way it is. Uh, anyways, I think I should sh close this video for now. Uh, I showed you guys how to log in. I've shown you guys how to start a new file uh, by entering the studio and choosing blank. And I've shown you guys how to drag in or rather double click on a hi-hat loop after turning off featured so that I can get some hi-hats. This is step one. Next, next up, we will actually start to play some drums. Okay, thank you.